Good morning, everybody. Just driving around. We've got some fresh snow in the back roads here. Hopefully, the last of the snow of spring. So I'm going to take this chance to drive around, and we've got the 35 millimeter. Hit the back roads. See if we can get some winter landscapes. I've got the 300 millimeter here with me as well, just in case we see any wildlife or birds. Let's go for a drive. Oh, a good bit of snow coming down now and the roads are absolutely beautiful the woods are stunning it's so hard to capture the scenes what I'm seeing everything looks so great but to isolate you know one little scene and make it look good is hard it's it's almost you're almost better to just go for a drive and enjoy the last of winter as it's happening around you I'm still lucky and I'm getting a few shots guys but uh, I'm hoping for a fox or something to come out nice red fox in the last of the snow Gerald and I were talking the other day, there's so many things that you can photograph, but keep them on your list because you don't have that award winning, you know, the shot that you envisioned. We were talking about cardinals the other day. I just got my first shot of a cardinal ever because we don't have them up here. And I was like, ooh, this is great, but it's nowhere near, you know, the perfect shot would be the bird isolated and on a cold day as he's singing, making his call, and you see the mist coming out of his beak. To me, that would be the award-winning cardinal shot. So, you know, I'm not gonna stop until I get that shot. Even if I do get that shot, I'm still gonna continue, you know, to shoot every cardinal I see, probably. It's the same thing with owls and... I'm always looking. I hit a little small town that I drive by all the time, but I never come through here. My grandmother's parents were from here. The road right up here is named Daly's Road. She was a daily, and I just passed a little cemetery right here. I'm sure I must have relatives. Let's get out and check this cemetery out. You guys know I love checking out old cemeteries. I have never been here. I don't know what guided me up here. I was just driving aimlessly down the back roads. And then I realized, wait a minute, I've never been on this road. I've never been to the cemetery. And it's right there. Let's check this out. I'm sure that I've got family in here. Just a tiny little graveyard. I recognize some of these names already. Sale. I'm wearing, all I've got is my running shoes on and we got snow last night. And unfortunately, if there's any stones that are right flat on the ground, we won't be able to see those. But I wanna just see if any of my family names, I recognize that name, Knight. Oh, there's a daily right there in the back corner. I wonder if that's my great grandparents. Look at this. 1918. I don't recognize that name. Huh. 39 years old, that's crazy. I apologize to anybody I'm walking on right now because like I say, you can't see. A lot of the old grave markers were just stones that were placed flat on the ground. So I'm sure I've probably walked over a few here. But right here is the one I wanted to see daily. 
Well, I'll have to ask my mother because I don't recognize either of these names. John and Sarah, I'm sure their family died in 1941 and 1954. They were both in their 80s. That's awesome. Let's check these ones out over here too. Rose Brew. Well, there's a reed, Irma Reed. There's another reed, Lavinia. I'm sure, wait a minute, how come the reeds are, I didn't know there were reeds in this place. Here's another one. Whoa, well, okay, I'm, I'm confused now, guys, because I came here looking for dailies and then I find a bunch of reeds. So, I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to ask my mom and dad about, about this. I'll record these names here. And then uh, Aunt Angie does a lot of the family history as well. But she never mentioned reeds being buried here in this graveyard. Cool, I'm glad I stopped. So, I gave Aunt Angie a quick call and I was mentioning some of the names back here. And Angie was just naming names and she said, well, Buckley. And so I came over here and I found Buckley. This would have been a cousin of mine, probably a fifth cousin or something like that. This poor guy, 1920 to 1938. So he was only 18. I'll flip you around and show you his headstone here. Erwin Buckley. This was a cousin, as I say, and he drowned in Cocoa Lake on a fishing trip, I guess. So my aunt remembered that name and she said, do you know, uh, have you seen any Buckleys? And I looked down and I said, yeah, I'm standing on his grave right now. So it was kind of strange. I was standing right there when she said that to me and I looked down and yeah, kind of weird how that works. Here's an old one, Simmons. Sidney Simmons died April 12th, 1917, 68 years. Something his wife Mary died 1945. I think it says she was 99 years. Cool. Do you guys remember the day that Stan and I were in the one of the graveyards in North Bay? And he said, oh, I didn't read any grave stones any markers we walked through hundreds of them stan stops and he looks down and we're just looking out enjoying the scenery and he says hey a pit and who i forget who was beside him well i knew both of those people from redbridge uh one of them was a good hunting buddy of my dad's and the other one was my first grade teacher and here i am the same thing i'm standing over this gravestone my aunt says look for erwin buckley i look down at the, the gravestone i'm standing on and it's erwin buckley so I mean, cool. I'm going to come back here when the snow is gone. And she mentioned some other family names and people that should be in here, including my great-great-grandfather, Seth Hazard, should be here in this little tiny graveyard somewhere. But as I say, there's a lot of stones that are flat, and I just can't see it with the snow here. We'll come back in the spring. Maybe we'll bring in Angie, because she is a fountain of knowledge when it comes to family history. She'll know. Call me weird, but I love... I love the history, uh, the families, the thinking of the stories and the hardships, you know, when they came and raised the families and the community and the get togethers, the dances, the, you know, the 1920s. I remember when I was a little kid, I got the Laura Ingalls books. I was like grade three and I was reading Little House on the Prairie and that whole book series and I loved it. And it was almost like maybe in a past life I remembered, you know, that kind of lifestyle. I, don't, I loved, I, I still love that kind of history. Call me weird. Sun is starting to come up here, so we're gonna do a little bit of photography. I've got the 300 millimeter with me. We're gonna walk across the way and check for birds down at the river. All right, I hear blackbirds, crows, ducks, woodpeckers, and I see open water down here. Pretty soon we're going to be looking for wood ducks on the river as well. I don't think they're back yet. Yeah, just mallards so far. 
Yeah, all the mallards are paired up, male and female. I see about four pairs of them here. The river is now completely open. The last vestiges of ice along the bank and that's it. We're gonna have herons back here in a week or two. And the spring season will start. Here comes a couple of geese. Just out with Gerald and Christine. And we can hear a cardinal. We don't see it. Yeah, somebody's doing a call. <laughs> yeah, somebody's up there calling. <laughs> I think it's in that tree there. You got the binoculars, you got to find it. This is crazy, we can hear it, we just can't find it. It was way at the top, we found them. So actually, believe it or not, those are pretty rare for up here in our town. So this property that we're on was donated to the city and they've turned it into a little bit of a gardens here. There's some water in behind us and, the, and some of the school kids actually come here and they do gardening and birding and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Right in the middle, right in the heart of town. A really cool little place here. This was the guy's backyard and he had all kinds of uh, like a fire pit here, but there's a, a well feature. He's got all this stone in here for the creek. So he had it, you know, quite set up and it's now known as a local bird sanctuary. Mm -hmm. 